gardeners. I hope you're having a beautiful day. Today is harvesting of all of my herbs and I am washing and hanging to dry. This is kind of my favorite once the end of the season comes and I've just got a whole bunch of herbs and stuff like that. Sometimes I freeze it in olive oil, sometimes I roll it into butter so I, and then freeze that. Uh, but this year I've just got a lot of things happening right now so I'm going to my default washing, hanging to dry and then basically storing away all the dry herbs. I find that I usually have enough herbs that last me all the way through till spring which is kind of fun. Um, so I'm just working on tying everything up in bundles. I've got all the rest of them here ready to go, ready for hanging. I like to throw them in the sink, sort of in their whatever it is, time all goes in one sink. I soak it really well, rinse it really well. You want to get the bugs off it, you want to get the dirt off of it, you want to pick off all the leaves and things that don't look like they're healthy anymore um, because that's not stuff that you want to be you know, preserving obviously. And it's way easier to remove all of that stuff before it's dried. Once it's dried and you start to pull it off, it's kind of all just going to end up getting stored. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'll show you kind of all the steps to it, but it's very, very simple. Got myself a little ball of string here, and one of the things that I do is instead of clumping everything into one big, it's generally a good idea to kind of break them into smaller bundles, because if you start to tie up one giant bundle, the ones that are on the inside, they're not going to get a good airflow, and you could start to get like mold and fungus and stuff like that before they actually dry. So, just kind of tying them up into sort of smaller little bundles is generally best practice when you're hanging your herbs to dry. So, when you're harvesting, I like to chop close to the bottom but not take all of it and leave maybe a few inches just so the plant can keep growing for the remainder of the season and potentially also if it's perennial in your zone you can ensure success. So once you've harvested everything I like to throw them all in their own respective plants into the sink, give them a good wash, lay them on a towel while I'm washing up all the rest of them. Get your string ready to go and then it's pretty simple. I'll start with one bundle, just tie a little knot on the bottom, make a little loop, and then from there I just keep grabbing sort of small bundles and making little loops to add more onto. Um, depending on where you're hanging them, you might have to stop after a while if you get too long of a string going, but I have a decent amount of space so that doesn't happen too, too often. And just take your time, uh, make sure that you've got all the ends sort of roughly about at the same spot so that when you wrap the string around it, it's going to hopefully grab all of them. You do want to tie also pretty decently tight when you're knotting it because what's going to happen is as they dry, they tend to shrink. And if you haven't knotted it tight enough, sometimes they can fall out of their little loops. Hey gardeners, quick pause. There are exciting things in the works. We're at the end of our gardening season here and I'm curious, what have you discovered about your garden? Are you feeling like perhaps your garden could have been more successful than it really was and sort of wondering what you might be able to do in order to have a best season next year? Well, I'm here to ask you if you've ever considered about learning about gardening over the winter time. Now, honestly, learning gardening over the winter when we're not gardening is probably the best time to do it. It gives us all sorts of space to learn and figure out what the ideal actions are that you would want to take for what you want out of your garden. Every single one of us has a different garden. We're different gardeners and we want different things out of it. So it can give you some space to sort of hum and haw and figure out what your next season could potentially look like. Learning over the winter is also a really good idea because it takes a lot of the overwhelm out of situations that can happen where you're in the middle of a drought and you can't figure out how to get enough water into your garden to keep the plants happy or you want to go away on holidays and you don't want your plants to die. You're concerned about weeds or the weeds are taking over your garden. How much fertilizing do you need to do? When? How? Pruning? There's so many questions that can come up in the middle of the season and a lot of times by the time we identify that we need to be doing something, it's too late. We probably should have already taken action on it. 
And so this is why I have created a gardening season bundle of courses, take you right beginning to end through the whole course. And why I think learning over the winter time is amazing for time management in the garden. I call myself a lazy gardener because I try to do everything I possibly can to garden as big as I can in the most efficient manner as I can. And so these are things that I share with all of the gardeners that I work with, including how to manage our time better in the garden. So if you are thinking that it sounds pretty good and you might be interested in learning about gardening over the winter time, there is a link in the bio to my gardening course. This is a self-led version of my courses that you can take over the winter time. So if you want to learn how to have more harvests, if you are curious how to expand your garden for next season, whether it's figuring out what those best spaces are to put the garden, the materials to use, what varieties actually you should be growing for your zone and your space and your time and even your preference for flavors, this is exactly for you. Now you can even learn how to indoor seed start. And this is a good one to get all the knowledge we need way before we actually need to be happening because gardening is something that has to happen at specific times. And if you're interested about starting a lot of your own plants indoors, then indoor seed starting is definitely the way to go, but we need to learn way ahead so that we can actually start those seeds at the right time. So I've got a whole module in there about that if you're interested in doing that because that can save you a ton of money when it comes to buying plants in the springtime. So the bundle is made up of three phases, as I said, beginning to end all the way through the season. You've got it available to you online on demand to learn over the winter time, and then it's there for you forever. So come back to it during the summertime, rewatch any videos you might need to, even on the little handy little app that comes with, you can take it right out into your garden as you're working through things. So if you are thinking that you want a better garden next year and you're jumping up and down because you had a taste of some of the things that could be successful in your garden and you want a lot more of it, this is for you. Check out the link in the bio. There's lots of details there. You're also welcome to drop in the comments any questions, send me an email. I hope to have you join us over the winter time as we prepare for a even bigger and more beautiful gardening season next year. Back to our regular scheduled programming. <laughs> So as you can see, I've just tied them on to this little light fixture um, where I have this window here right above my kitchen sink. This is my favorite place in my house to hang all my herbs to dry just because it's got that really nice airflow coming through the window. I don't get more than like maybe half hour, hour of direct sun ever coming in this window. So safe on that front. Generally speaking, wherever you decide to hang your herbs to dry, you want it to be warm, you want it to have good airflow, but you don't want it to be sitting in direct sun because all of these guys have a lot of beautiful, volatile essential oils, but those are your medicinal oils, but when they're volatile, it means things like sunlight is going to dissipate them and you're gonna lose that. So this is my favorite. I've seen all sorts of creative ways. If you have like a ceiling fan, you could tie it to the strings, hang it from the ceiling fan, run it on low that way if you want to. Maybe clean your blades, make sure there's no dust on them, but just find, find an easy space that's out of the way. Generally within probably like a week, they'll be ready to go. Um, but the nice thing about drying though is 
If it ends up staying up here for two weeks, just because I'm dealing with all the other things coming out of my garden, no big deal. And then I can pull it down and store it when I get to it. I try not to leave it up there for too, too long because it could start to collect dust. <laughs> um, but other than that, really, week, two weeks, that's probably an ideal window. You'll find it, um, you can start to sort of like give it a little squeeze and if it's dry and the things are starting to fall off you know it's ready. If it's still a little bit soft and you can sort of feel it hasn't completely dried itself out, leave it a little bit longer and then it's ready to go. So happy herb harvesting and drying.